telling me your story. Basically, um, how old is you? How old were you? How did you end up becoming addicted or finding meth? Okay. I was, oh my gosh, isn't that awful? I was probably, well, I was 21 the very first time. How did it happen? Um, I was, I had went out for lunch and um, had a few beers and then had to go back to work. And so somebody said, here, I can sober you up. And that's how it started. And then. Can you give me an idea of how addicting and hard that one time made it. You know, people say, you know, it's just one time, but I mean, explain to me, for somebody who's never done meth, how that one time, it just grabs you. That's all it takes is once. It really does. And you search for that high over and over and over again. Um, but once you can't get that high, you are searching for just to keep you leveled out. Because otherwise you'll crash and burn. <laughs> so. Um, give me an idea of the road, you know, mm -hmm. the road to becoming hooked onto it. I mean, how did it change your life? How did you, I mean, what, how did it destroy things? Not, you know, talking about your kids yet, but just your life pattern. Things mm -hmm. were going to be different. Absolutely different. Um, I would go from, I'll just smoke a bowl to, I was smoking three and four bowls just to get up and go. Even though I function, I, it still took... You know, you start out that way, you start out with a quarter gram, and it'll last you three or four days. And then you're up to a gram, which is only lasting you a day. Or even more, you're going three grams and four grams a day. Um, how long did you do that? Um, overall, a total of probably battling back and forth, you're looking at probably six, seven, eight years easily. How long was the first time? Um, a, a solid two and a half years, and then I quit and then went back to it. Um, look, kind of give me a timeline. Um, you said you were doing meth, and mm -hmm. then you got pregnant. Kind of mm -hmm. explain that to me with your son, right? Uh-huh. Um, I was doing it. I found out I was pregnant with him. Um, quit doing it completely as soon as I found out I was pregnant with him. And, um... The whole nine months was completely clean. Probably stayed clean for another six months, maybe, and then went back into it. Uh, the up and down with his dad and everything else was probably a lot of that. When you say up and down, I mean just he. Used he also he also used. Gotcha. Uh -huh. um, now, after your son was born, mm -hmm. you said you got back into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it just because you relapsed? How did that happen? I just relapsed. Yeah, I think it was the stress with him with his dad. He was an up and down person anyway. Um, and that was one of our common bonds there to, to use together. So I think that was where that started. And then after we split up, I continued to use. Um, and then from there, uh, let's see here, from there, everything just kind of spiraled down. Um, I truly believe that when I was pregnant with Nicole, I don't know what I was thinking, like it was just going to go away. That truly was what was in my mind. Um, and I found out I was pregnant with her probably, well, it was almost five months into it. And then uh, I continued to use clear up until the time I had her. Um, so, I mean, you found out you were pregnant, mm -hmm. you're on that, and you continue to use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... No conscience at that point, honestly. It's like I was living in a fantasy world. <laughs> trying to get it out of my mind that I was really pregnant. So you were just trying to mm -hmm. ignore it. Mm -hmm. What you were doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that I was pregnant, I was ignoring also. Why? I mean, is that why? I mean, that's why you did it? Was just, mm -hmm. just your I was already doing it. And, and yes, with the circumstances in my life, the way they were, um, it wasn't good. So I was, I was continuing to use. I guess I truly, in my mind at that point, can tell you that I, I really thought it was going to go away. Now I look back and think, now that was really dumb. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking at the time. Um, I mean, during the time that you were pregnant, did you ever stop and think, 
I have a baby inside me, um, what it can be doing to the baby? No. No, I, I did at certain points, but most of the time, no. And why do you think that is? It's just part of the drug? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it, you don't think about a lot of things. It's like everything's in fast, in fast forward. Everything's moving very fast the whole time. Now, um, it numbs you. How's that? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, basically, I mean, how did it make you feel? It, it numbed you. It, it, a lot of the issues I was having as far as, um, the the person I was with does not help, and then when they're using also that doesn't help. But now there's a lot of people out there, a lot of moms who may be watching this interview, um, and they're gonna think they're gonna be angry with you, mm -hmm. or they might even judge you. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that's fair? Do you think that, that they? Sh I mean, that's right. No, but they will, and that's okay. There's a lot of people out there that, that need the help, that don't, don't know where to turn. And I think that's a lot of it, too, when you don't know where to turn or who to turn to. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know there's a lot of places out there that, that can help, but they're scared. You are scared. Are people going to judge me? Are people going to think I'm a horrible person or a horrible parent? But the reason you talk about this, mm -hmm. I mean, give me, what's the message that you have? The reason you're doing this is for other moms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if I can reach one person to tell them there is help and there's hope, then that's all it takes. It's taken me a long time. It's taken me 10 years to pull myself completely up out of this. Um, and it is a struggle still every day. Uh, but if I can help just one person, because it affects your kids, it affects your family, it affects your friends. Do you almost feel that you have to, you know, that you've heard people say you have to hit rock bottom to, before you can get back up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But everybody's rock bottom is different also. Can it be done? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you've been clean how long? Six, almost seven years. In July? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and how old were you when you were using and had Nicole? Um, I was 26. Mm -hmm. Now, walk me through when you gave birth, mm -hmm. you know, the process of what had happened. Um, you know, did they test you? Did they mm -hmm. kind of detect you were on meth? How did that happen? Um, I went into the hospital to have her at 345 and had her at 414. Uh, very quick. And there was a massive blood loss. Uh, they wanted to put an IV in me. I was like, absolutely not. Um, she was okay. Everything was okay. It just went really, really quick. Uh, my mom tells me that they about lost me because of the blood loss. Uh, I was like, I was fine. I was ready to get up and go. Well, they knew something was up. Um, and so they tested me. They automatically test her. Um, I was in the hospital for probably three days before they released me. She went into ICU just to, for testing and everything. Everything was okay. But they automatically, I believe that they automatically test you no matter what. At least that was the understanding I got back then. So So you walked in and, I mean, did they think that you had a lot of blood loss? Was it because you had been using meth? Um, because I had her so quickly was why. Now, were you high when you went in? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was so quick. I, it was all thrown at me very, very quickly. Obviously, at three, having her, or going in at 345, having her at 414 is no time at all within a half an hour. Now, you used throughout your pregnancy with Nicole. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you used before you went to deliver? Her? That day. That day. I had her on March 31st, um, and I had used that day. Now, when they tested you, and you tested positive for meth, mm -hmm. what were the next steps with Nicole? What did, what did they do with the baby? They, um, they go in and automatically test her, and, and I had to wait. Now, I, I still got to see her. 
um, CPS was called, they came in, they started signing papers, they were questioning things. Uh, of course, they're wanting me to sign papers also. So I, at that point, um, was asking what I had to do to get them back because I knew they were taking all of my children. But I also didn't want them to go into foster care, so my mom took them. I was supposed to go through six months of drug testing and uh, also counseling and AANA meetings. There was a bunch I had a bunch of hoops I had to jump through, and then I would get them back. And I went through all of that. Um, they signed. I signed an IA in the hospital, which is to give the children to my mother at that point for a temporary guardianship. Uh, I find out at the very end of that, which was in September, October, that they were signing off because everything had came, I had done everything I was supposed to, but I did not have to give my kids, or my mom did not have to give my kids back because of the temporary guardianship papers, the way they were signed. So you got some of your kids back, but some you didn't. Absolutely. But she only, she had the middle too. Um, my oldest, her dad had, or my, her, my ex-husband had her. And through all of this, she still, basically, we just switched roles. Um, he had custody of her, so she came and visited me on the weekends through all of this. Um, I did some, let's see, in that six months, I did some uh, supervised visits with, with my middle two. Um, I can tell you, even now to this day, and this is awful, that I don't have the bond with my 10 year old that I, that I do with my other children because that wasn't allowed, um, which is hard. I mean, we are now more bonded than we used to be, but 10 years later, so that's a, that's a struggle. Um, I, uh, let's see here, what else did? Would you say that meth tears a family apart? Absolutely, oh, absolutely, in more ways than one. It, it, it tears your extended family up. You know, you said earlier, I mean, it's been a long road. You've come a long way, but, I mean, 10 years later, it's obviously still it's very emotional mm -hmm. for you. Very, and it's a struggle every day still. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself ever just still breaking down or feeling guilty or bad? Yes. I do. I do. And my kids pick me up when I do that because they don't blame me. I blame myself more than anything, but they don't blame me. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would you compare your feelings then from now? Um, ten years ago, I had a lot of hate, bitterness. I wanted to hurt people. Now, um, I have a lot of remorse. Um, I can't say I'm ashamed. Um, I was then. I have came a long way as far as my walk with Christ also. And I think that has made a huge difference. Um, my grandma was my rock uh, and I lost her two years ago. So that's been a struggle also. But knowing that I made it through that without using has made a big difference also. You're being very vulnerable right now but you get to, you know, maybe be helping that one person out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's worth, it's worth every bit of it. It's not going to change. You can't ignore it. Uh, what, what happens while you're pregnant, it, it makes a big difference. Your decisions that you make during your pregnancy make a, a big difference difference in the outcome later on there's always help and trust me there are tons and tons of people that will help um and it is uh, it, uh, relationships have a lot to do with that who you're with um the company that you're keeping 
you know, Nicole tested positive for meth. At that point, when they first came back and told you, did they tell you what they had found? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They came back and told me that, um, and it took a day and a half, almost two days before they actually got her results back. And they did, uh, they came back and said she tested positive. At that point, I mean, you mm -hmm. hear these words, does it resonate with you? What's really happening? Did it sink mm -hmm. in? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? I, I had really screwed up. I was done. And I really was done at that point. Um, I wouldn't sign any papers until they could tell me what I had to do to get my children back. Was I that the life-changing moment right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I had, um, in, in the days and the weeks to follow after that, uh, I, I probably had 10 or 12 journals of where I would write. I was so angry, so angry. Um, I was mad at myself, but I was also mad at everybody around me. Now, after you had Nicole and that moment happened, that was your life-changing moment, mm -hmm. did you have any relapses after that? Yes, I did. Now, people are going to think, well, you just found out your daughter was born with meth in her system. You said that's your life-changing moment. Mm -hmm. and How you, does that happen? And you turn around and go back to it. It's, it's Honestly, it's easy to turn around and go back to. At that point, it was very easy. Everything in my life had crumbled. And that was a numbing. It, it's very numbing. Um, all the stuff that's right here in front of your face is put back here when you're doing it. So you don't, you don't worry about everything that's normally right here in your face that's shoving you down. Um, it was a good probably year after that that I had uh, fallen back and relapsed. But after that, I was done. Um, and then I found out I was pregnant with my youngest. And from, so you had Nicole, you mm -hmm. were clean mm -hmm. for a year, you relapsed. After you relapsed, how long mm -hmm. did you relapse for? It was a very short, it was it was a very, very short stint. It wasn't even a two week stint. So you did that, and then have you been clean since that moment? Um, no, I had my nine year old, and then I had one more relapse that was probably a month long. And that was almost, well, um, about seven and a half years. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Um, at that point, there was a lot of shame. There was a lot of guilt. Um, and once again, there was a lot of anger. I was very angry. Um, I, I truly thank God every day that um, she's pulled through and there's not any problems. And that's what's kept me above water. That's what's kept me where I'm at now. To look at them even now as they're growing up and to see what I missed out on. I mean, I missed out on 10 years of her life, basically. I mean, I was in and out. Um, but to get them up every day and, you know, to feed them every night and to do homework with them, I didn't have that. I didn't have that with my middle two.